Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, 2.31 on the um, 4th of May already, and uh, the market's uh, rallying sharply today, as you all know by now. And uh, it was weak at the open, and then it turned around massively, uh, supposedly on a rumor that Warren Buffett had bought uh, several million dollars of additional shares of Apple. He was already in, and his investment wasn't looking too good a week or two ago. And uh, uh, obviously, that's all reversed because uh, I believe Apple hit a new high today. Now, that uh, what lesson can we learn from that? That lesson is uh, don't listen to the analysts because several analysts had been downgrading Apple stock because uh, they thought the uh, uh, the iPhone 10 or X had not sold well, and it uh, turns out that that uh, is what really drove the quarter. Now, personally, I'm not going to spend $1,000 uh, uh, before accessories uh, for a telephone, but uh, evidently a lot of people think that that uh, is fine. So uh, anyway, uh, that is what helped turn the market around. But uh, even, even when you have a day like this with a catalyst, uh, it, it's a single stock with HGSI, and uh, the way I'm approaching it, uh, you can always find stocks to trade on the uh, long side or the short side if you prefer. Now, I know that HCSI is a complicated program. Uh, uh, that's because it's so powerful. Now, what I've done and my uh, everything that I'm doing is under my name. You can see that I don't have any other... Uh, uh, people on my list right here because I just use my own uh, methodology. And that's not to say that the other methods don't work. They do, but uh, this is something I'm comfortable with. And I'm trying to get people uh, uh, more involved with uh, VPA or volume price analysis. And uh, in doing so, I am just using my methodology. Now, uh, I talked to George yesterday um, Obviously, we would like to have more users, and uh, what he told me is if you have friends that would like to try it, uh, and if they subscribe, he'll give you a free month of, uh, of service. Now, with the complexity of the program, um, I was talking to Paul Reiki yesterday. Uh, Paul's, uh, I've known Paul a long time. He's a friend, and he's a uh, power user of HGSI. And he suggested that I do a quick start for newbies. But it's uh, more than just for newbies. Uh, realistically, as we get into this, you'll see that uh, this will uh, uh, take care of many of your needs uh, if you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time prospecting. Now, I know that I overdo it when I'm building uh, views, filters, and combos. But uh, the reason for that is I'm always looking for the absolute best way to get the most out of the product. And uh, I've been using this uh, product for close to 20 years. And it's amazing that uh, uh, I'm always finding new ways to work and to get the most out of it. So uh, I'm going to share the latest with you. Uh, but... Uh, before we do that, uh, well, here, let me point out what, we have, what I have. I have a quick start end of day, and it's just got uh, a few folders in it and a few views. I'm going to cover a lot of these and uh, then a quick start enter day. And I did the same thing for the charts. And you'll see as I go through this that uh, this is uh, plenty powerful on its own without getting uh, down into the basic end of day scans. Now, if you've updated uh, this afternoon your uh, Insider Club files, you will have these. If not, you can uh, update them later today uh, using the same link or wait until tomorrow morning when I send a link out again. And uh, then you'll have all of this. What I've decided to do on the website is package the quick start with a basic end of day scans. Now, this was my first attempt at uh, at uh, slimming down my files, and you can see that it's grown. But um, that's that's just the way it is. So I'm going to go with the quick start. 
What I want to do now though is I want to show you some new views, filters, and combos that I have put in here recently. And I'm going to go through those right now. Now I'm in the major market ETFs. Before I leave this, you can see that we're having a very strong day. Uh, the QQQ. And this is up to date. I'm running Thinkorswim in the background with a five minute update. Is up 1.96%. Uh, Currently trading at 93.44% of its daily range. And the change from the open is 2.40%. So you can see that it's moved up uh, sharply. I don't know what kind of chart I have on here, but uh, here's here's the open on the Qs. Let me go to this, and you can see where they are right now, and you can see the volume is lagging. This is uh, uh, this is somewhat uh, surprising to me. Maybe we're getting uh, starting to get more into the summer season, but the projected volume is not all that great on most of these ETFs other than the semiconductors. Now the semiconductors have really been beaten down. And uh, let's bring that chart up. You can see uh, the fall on this ETF. It's the SMH. And uh, these uh, it's been painful for those who have held the semiconductors all the way down here. Now notice on this, here's a VPA flag. This is stopping volume. This happened several days ago. And then here is another stopping volume, and this this low is a little bit higher than this low. So really, this is also a test. And look what we have here. We have a couple of pocket pivots, and we also have a volume a point of control going from red to green. Uh, so the semiconductors uh, may be rotating in. Uh, keep your eye on them, and um, this gives a clear picture of this. I look at this scorecard ETF view and I've got this in the quick start uh, uh, intraday. I'm looking at the wrong one. Quick start intraday scorecard ETF right here because I go to my let me see if I can choose the group here and get this up. I go down to my uh, market analysis user groups. These were or these are what was formerly known as the WB user groups, but for new people trying the program, WB user groups didn't mean anything. So I thought I would uh, just, or I did go ahead and just change it to market analysis user groups, and uh, I'm applying this uh, view to it. Now, um, there are, here's some spider ETFs, and uh, here's uh, uh, the most popular or most heavily traded ETFs right here if you go down this list. And if you uh, look over here, you can see the intraday volume and the estimated and the 50-day average moving volume. These are heavily traded ETFs. So if you want to be uh, where the action is, uh, this is where you want to be. I don't know how many of you uh, trade ETFs, but they are in the program. I primarily concentrate on stocks, and I think most of you do too, but uh, uh, ETFs are here. Now let's, I'm going to go to my all securities folder, all securities group. The fastest way to get there for you newbies is to hold down your alternate key and hit the space bar. And I'm uh, moving from my ETFs to the alternate securities. And now let's go in and take a look at some of these views that I put in yesterday. Uh, I'm going to go down here to I'm a little punchy today so you'll have to bear with me. Okay, I'm going into my uh, uh, basic intraday scans. And I've moved a couple of these up to the quick start. I'll point that out when I get back there. But uh, this one right above it is bullish VPA or volume price analysis flags during the last three days. Uh, I thought in addition to that, uh, I would uh, find uh, bullish candles in this same smart group to be another way to look at this. Now I want to I want to take a, a sidetrack here or that I don't think that's correct, but uh, I want to divert 
And there was a question in the uh, bulletin board or the Skype group today. Uh, by the way, if you're an Insider Club member, you are welcome to join us on the Skype group, uh, which is uh, pretty active uh, during the uh, the market week. Just uh, send me an email if you don't know how to join, and I'll send you the link. Uh, anyway, you have to activate these uh, smart groups if you're a newbie. And you click open your designer. Go to the file menu. Um, manage group subscriptions and select the user groups or the smart groups that you want. Now a smart group for those of you who may not know is a group of stocks which is created by a filter and a combo that I put together. I did all the Woodward and Brown uh, years ago but I want these checked because these are the ones uh, that I use, uh, the ones that you should use also, if you're following my uh, method. So just uh, uh, pause this video and make sure that these are selected. And then say OK. And it will update your smart groups. Because if you, if you don't have them, then you can't use these screens. Because these screens are referencing the stocks and groups, stocks and groups moving up smart groups. So this is bullish uh, VPA flags the last three days. This is bullish candles and stocks and groups moving up. Now what I did here I, is I did something different on these. these this one is driven, driven by a combo ranking. And look what's at the top of the list, Apple, for strong momentum intraday. It moved up 4.5% so far and it's uh, at 99.57% of its daily range. So that's driving this one. Now on this next one, I decided I was going to change it to the industry percentage price change one day. And you may ask why I did that. Well, the reason is because this, well, here, let me, I'll do a quick review of the filter. It's a very basic filter. White body equals yes, which means it has to be a bullish candle. A percent range is greater than 66.66. I want these stocks to be, their intraday range to be at least two-thirds of the way up. The last close is a greater than a dollar, trading 250,000 shares. And it goes directly to this smart group. It's the stocks and groups uh, moving to the upside. And then I have one for the uh, $15 one. Now the reason... Uh, I like this group is because over the years we have found out uh, many times that stocks appear here first before they start moving up. And uh, my thinking on this one is uh, th this this would be with the strong momentum, the number 12, but the 12A, I'm looking at the groups. These are the stocks and groups that were moving up yesterday. And my thinking is I want to find out if these stocks and groups or the stocks and the groups are continuing to move up today. Now this morning I can tell you that this intraday change column over here was pretty much red. There were very few uh, green uh, percentage change one days in here. But uh, since the market turned around, uh, there are it's pretty dominant as you can see. Now I can look right here. And I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, well, let's go to Home Builders. Uh, there's only two that are showing up. But you can see that uh, they've moved up a small percentage, but they're above the two-thirds portion of their intraday range. And if I change to the industry group, then I can... I'm, I'm going to go up here. I don't want to confuse you, but I'm going to go to the Quick Start Intraday and I can just click on scorecard intraday and then that will show me every home builder that's moving up. Only two of them made the smart group last night. But if those two are moving up, my assumption is that the other stocks in the group are moving up. So just by clicking on the scorecard intraday and I'll show you how to do that just concentrating on these up here in a few minutes. Uh, that is how I can go in and look. Now, I am sorted, once again, still on the raw combo rank, 
but I do have a secondary sword on here. If I don't, I should. And I'm going to click on A to Z, and I, I don't, but I'm going to put it in here. By a secondary sword, I mean the raw combo, or the combo rank, which is the uh, uh, groups moving up in my prior view. I'm going to just type the word range in here. And then what I want is intraday range. And then these just all happen to be sorted by the range it looks like. So, uh, But uh, let me do another group. Let me go back. I'm going to go back. Now don't can get confused because I'm moving around here. Here's the same group. Let's try a different group. Semiconductors, I told you, were very beaten down. But they look strong today. So I'm going to look over here. Here's the semiconductor group. You can see that most of them are up. So I'm going to go to the industry group first. Before I do that, notice the combo rank is keeping my sort on the industry group. So I'm going to change to that. But these are just the semiconductors that are in the smart group. I want to see the whole universe. So all I have to do is click on Scorecard Intraday, and this is the entire list of the um, semiconductor devices. And now I can see stocks that I may want to look at for potential trades in the whole list. There are 66 securities in here. Skyworks Solution up 4.26% today, trading at nearly 100% of its range. And it's up 7% uh, uh, compared to the open. Let's just bring that chart up. And you can see that here's the open. It traded down. When the market turned around, it started moving up. Now, this chart is one of the charts that I'm providing in the, the uh, uh, short list of charts, uh, the getting started charts. Notice this chart. This has been beaten down. The group has been beaten down, the dotted line. What do we have here? We have multiple pocket pivots. We have a volume point of control turning green. We have on the expansion contraction, the uh, three going above the six. I can see it right here, but this gives me a visual down here. So this stock, there's been some buying. Plus, there are some. there's an excellent VPA call on this stock. Strength seen returning after a downtrend and then the high volume right here added to the strength. So uh, that is this part of the VPA. This is the effort to rise. And you can see also, and this is of primary importance, the group had started turning up here a couple of days ago. Now you would have seen that uh, looking either at the end of day uh, charts into the groups, I should say, with the advancers versus the decliners, or uh, maybe in stocks and groups moving up. But I know they appeared yesterday. This candle right here. Well, excuse me, I, I don't know if Skyworks is in that list or not, but some of them were. Anyway, this candle right here. Now, I want to show you something else about this chart. This group line, sometimes I find it distracting. I know the group's moving up, so what can I do? I just edit the indicator. I go into the group index. I click on color, change this to white, and I got rid of it. And now I get a clean look at the relationship to the uh, 50, the 100, the uh, 200, and the 6, or in the 3 and the 6 day. Right here is an early buy. What does this early buy correspond to? It corresponds to the pocket pivot and also the VPOC 1010, which is the volume point of control, which means that the uh, control went from the bears right here back to the bulls. Now, you can also see this is a very choppy indicator, but it often gives great signals, and when we tie them in, uh, with pocket pivots, that's even a better signal. And then if you get a VPA flag, it's even a better signal. So uh, if you don't mind bottom fishing, uh, sometimes these work out great. Other times they don't. Right here, it didn't work out great. 
Why? Let me bring that group uh, line back. I'm going to click on white. This time I'm going to black. And uh, it tried to move up, but look what happened here. The group collapsed again. This one actually held up pretty well. And then the group collapsed right here. And uh, uh, the uh, semiconductor group dragged all of them down. I mean, that's all there is to it. So that's that's one of my views. And uh, what I like about this, well, I did too many things. Now I have to go back to my old securities. What I really like about this is that it goes into the stocks and groups moving up, and it, it tells me if there's going to be follow-through or not, or if they are following through. Okay, I'm not going to spend much time on this one. It's the same thing, except this goes to the smart group stocks and groups moving up in the $1 to $15 range. And you can see that most of these are green also. So you can quickly go back and forth between these two. There is a version for the end of day, which I suggest you look at because you can uh, go in and you can create a watch list. Now, uh, let me take you up to, here is one, trending stocks, leaders, raw relative strength. But uh, I want to take you uh, to, uh, if I can find it, Oh, it's right above it. No wonder I couldn't see it. Uh, trending stocks. I The more I use this, the more I like it. And I'm going to click on this and uh, explain what it does. These are stocks that have a VPA long-term trend, medium-term trend, and a short-term trend. These are mathematical trends. Uh, Matt determined... Uh, the math on them and then this one is the EMA fan which means that a stock is above its uh, 50, 100, 200, I'm sorry, uh, 18, 50, 100 and 200 day moving averages. I still got that wrong but you get the idea. Anyway these are stocks that are in uh, decent long-term trends as you can see and uh, what that often means that there is uh, institutional support behind them because every time they sell off, well, not this one, this is a dollar stock. Bad example. Let's, let's go to this one, GDS. This is a stock uh, I've been in before, and uh, I'm not in it right now. I've been looking at it, and stupidly, I didn't buy it. But uh, it has been showing up here. Let me go down. I'm in my quick start, as you can see. Let me just go to a clean clean chart here well I guess I have the industry group line in all of these but I don't have the three and the six so it's a little bit cleaner so I've got the 18 I've got the 50 I've got the 100 and I've got the 200 that is what this column over here signifies if this column is a yes these stocks are in long-term uptrends. You can also see that there is a scorecard over here. So, uh, like I said, this is a stock that's been appearing in here. I didn't uh, uh, take it, but uh, uh, it, it certainly would have been an excellent trade in retrospect. Let me go back to this one because there are pocket pivots in here. I'll just stick with this chart. Uh, the, uh, the three and the six are short-term entry points on a chart. So you can see when the three and the six cross over here, kind of hard to see. There's a pocket pivot that day. There's a volume point of control. The group is moving up. A lot of information in this chart. You have to look closely to see these, though. Uh, but you'll get used to that. Um, what I want to point out here is that when I click here, Right here, I'm clicking here. Notice that the uh, Matt calls these the best fit uh, long trends or best fit trends. Here's the long, here's the medium, and here's the short. And I'm clicking on that, and all three of them come up. So if I go back a day or go back two days, go back three days, uh, this stock it didn't 
pass this filter on this day because this says down. But on this day, it went back to up. And uh, that's when it appeared. And then it kind of stalled here. I hesitated there and it took off again. Now as I move my mouse over here, I want you to keep your eye over in this area on those trends. See how the trends change? They were down and then they turned to up. So that is what this combo does. This is primarily based upon the combo. Now notice with my secondary sort here, intraday, it is the intraday percent range and these stocks, they're, these are trading at the top of their range. Okay, now I, I am, I'm still updating and I'll shut it off here in a second when the market closes. But uh, th these are little inexpensive stocks. I'm not going to pay any attention to them. Well, here's one that's 10.05. Let's now... Now I should... Uh, okay, here's Roos Hospitality. Now this had a big move today. Did they read? Report today, they reported today, 5-4. So let's just click on this. And as I, as I move my mouse, I'm holding my mouse key down. Notice that this was in an uptrend. Until this day, it would not have appeared here. But prior to that, it would have appeared until that day. Right here is the, the day that it started showing up uh, using uh, this combo rank. That, what I mean by showing up, I mean that all three, all four of these uh, were green at that point. Uh, how do I know that it was in a, uh, the fan? Because all of these uh, moving averages are stacked in the right place. So my thinking and theory behind this is uh, the old cliche, which works that the trend is our friend. So look at these stocks using this both end of day and intraday and you're going to find uh, some good looking charts and some good looking uh, trades. Now I have one other view here. I'm doing the same thing except I am using the smart group, the raw relative strength, raw combo. And what this does is it limits the selections. I'm going to click over here to relative strength, high relative strength, and high group rank stocks. Notice the relative strength is 98, group is 94, and so on down the list. Now this is one I looked at before. Let's look at this one. Now look at this crazy stock. <laughs> this one has been appearing and uh, of course uh, it didn't take it either, but let's just take a look at this. Now watch this over here as I Okay, it was down there. It turned up right there and it, it to pass through at that point. Now down in here, down, 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 not appearing. There it, it, uh, it turned up. Then it went down for a day or two days and then it turned up again. So you're going to find these stocks up at the top of the list. And you can see that the relative strength and the group rank are both high on here. Uh, so uh, uh, there's the, uh, the closing bell. So if you want to limit your searches to high relative strength and high group strength stocks, this is where you go. Uh, and you're gonna, you can find a lot of candidates. I, you know, I wish I uh, had time to do it to justice. I'm just trying to cover as much as I can. Uh, but as you get down, as you scroll down the list here, you're going to find stocks that are down in a couple of them. Uh, concentrate on the stocks where everything is up. Now I'm going to do a, uh, first of all, let me go in and uh, we're going to start looking at the, uh, the market here. And I'm going to go up and use the uh, quick start uh, for, for most of this. Okay, what I want to do is I want to get to the main menu. I'm talking to myself. 
and uh, intraday, intraday options, manual. I don't want to update anymore. Okay, so it's on manual. Now I'm going to go into the designer. I, am, I have shown you individual stocks. Now I want to concentrate on the top down, on the intraday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the industries. And I'm going to go to my tools menu. And I'm going to rebuild the indexes in the group. Since I've been updating every five minutes using Thinkorswim, that means all of these stocks are up to date and I am building the industry groups with up to date uh, stock information. So even though uh, the market just closed, I've got the latest information. Now I'm going to click here and let's go up to the quick start intraday. I want to show you what you can concentrate on uh, in the future if you don't want to use all of this stuff that I have out there. So I am uh, in Ron Brown Quick Start Intraday top-down process views for market and group analysis. If I click on number one, this sorts, you look up here and see what the combo rank is. It's the advancers divided by the decliners. And packaged, the packaged food index is the most active group as far as advancers versus decliners. 34 to 1 today. I mean, we, we all thought Apple was where it was at, but this is where uh, it's at. And this is a group that is extremely beaten down, as you can see. What's a group rank? 14 on it. But with the insight that with this method and using these views, you can spot these. This packaged food uh, was up there uh, relatively early today. Now I'm going to change to the industry group. And because everything is right in here, I can just click on Scorecard Intraday and I can look at these stocks. Remember, I am sorted on, well, this is Strong Momentum Intraday. And uh, uh, Herbalife, HLF, is the top stock based upon uh, the range and the percentage price change. So if I bring this stock, now th this is not a beaten down stock. This is actually a leading stock. Uh, you can see it's a relative strength of 93. The group rank is 14. So this obviously has been outperforming the stocks in the group. But let's look at some of these other stocks. Now here is a beaten down stock. Something, does anybody know what drove these stocks today? I have no idea. But you can see using this chart, yesterday there was a pocket pivot, another one today. The VPOC, or volume point of control, turned positive. The 3 went above the 6. How do I know? Because this green bar appeared above the 0 line. And uh, there was buying yesterday, but uh, two VPA flags. Kraft Heinz, two pocket pivots yesterday, a volume point of control. Beaten down stock. Look at the fan. But what do we have here today? Uh, the green bar went above the 0 line. So if you're in to buying beaten down stocks, this is how you can find them because they are move, starting to move as a group. Now this one, uh, I don't see any pocket. Tootsie Roll Industries. General Mills, not, uh, not too exciting, not as good as the, uh, the ones at the top of the list. But you can see that most of these stocks are moving up. Let's go down here to the very weakest one, Sanderson Farm. Ah, it had a white body, but it's really not doing much. These at the top of the list are where the strength is because of the combo, the strong momentum intraday combo. Now let's go back, and I want to go back to my demand supply. So you can just go down the list. I'm not going to go down all these. Here's semiconductor manufacturing. Here's sem semiconductor devices, which is uh, turning around 57 positive and only 5 negative with 1 unchanged. I'm going to do a quick change to the industry group. I'm going to go to the scorecard intraday. Uh, NXP is at the top of the list based upon the strong momentum combo. Look at this. Uh, a bottom fish going to hang up that phone. 
And uh, this, people, people always say to me, well, not always, but a lot of times, I want to find stocks just when they're beginning to move. Well, this is how you find them. Uh, because the group is moving. You want the group to move, and uh, if the group continues to move and there's no guarantee that it's going to, these are uh, places where you can find opportunities. Okay, I'm going to go back here. Let's go back up here, and I'm going to sort on this again. Here's another way to look at this. You can look at the industry groups that were up today. When I looked at this this morning after the market opened about 30 minutes in, uh, the more majority of these groups were down. The day closed with 158 groups up. And this one is sorted on the percentage price change one day. So if you look over here, you can see that entertainment facilities with nine advancers, four decliners, was up 4.48%. So big move there. But... Uh, not as large a group. Here's consumer electric and wholesale appliances, 7 to 0, up 4.38%. Let's look at the group chart moving up nicely. Let's go in and take a look at some, some of the stocks. I'm doing it top down here, but I'm doing it very quickly. I'm looking at the scorecard intraday, which weeds out the stocks, which uh, are less than a, a buck. So uh, anyway, these are the ones that you would want to concentrate on. You can see how quickly I'm doing this. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's see. Coal operations. How about e-commerce discretionary? What? 13 and 6 today. Change to the industry group. Scorecard intraday. Strongest ones at the top. Strongest ones based upon the short term, not based upon the uh, not based upon anything else. It's based upon strong momentum, uh, price and volume on one day. So you have to look through or you can uh, certainly move to the right. Uh, you can look at look over here at the uh, group. I'm sorry, the um, best fit uh, trends. Are they up or down? You can see that this one's all down. You know it's a bottom fish. Let's take a look at uh, Land's End here, which uh, has an up and two up or down. It, it was good, but it's, it's starting to go again. So if you, like, if you want to take the time to go top down intraday, the, this is a way to do it. This, this one's based upon percentage price change one day. This one's based upon advances versus decliners. So you have two options. Yeah, as coal has been moving for several days. That's right, Steve. Uh, where did I see coal? Was that in the other view? Right here, coal operations. Yes, this has been moving at 10 and 0 today. Let's look at the group chart. You can see that coal has been moving up, as Steve said. Now, which of these stocks would we like to consider, maybe? Scorecard intraday. Just look at them. Look at this. Three days of pocket pivots, volume point of control, uh, turned green, and this stock took off. Notice that the group turned up and... Uh, uh, it has been moving up in the groups. Okay, these are up. These are down. And uh, the, we only have 17 groups that were down today. So this is a quick read. Now, another thing that I put in here for you, and this is from the last webinar, but it's kind of been lost in all of my many groups. Uh, remember the uh, industry groups up one day, Remember this, entertainment facilities, consumer electronics and appliance wholesalers. Let's see if this works. All I'm going to do is I'm going to skip up to all securities, and I'm going to go to stocks up in groups intraday. And remember those groups that were up. If you don't want to go top down, if you update your indexes like I showed you, you just come in here and it's going to show you the industry percentage price change one day. These stocks are going to be sorted according 
to the intraday range if you're doing a intraday percent range as a secondary sort. The primary sort is industry percentage price change one day over here. And of course the stocks uh, that uh, close at the highest part of their daily range are going to be at the top of the list. And then you go down in descending order. So let's look at this one. Uh, this one closed at the top of its range. Uh, it's it's been consolidating. I mean, it's it's uh, in uh, so-called Wyckoffian terms. It's building a cause to potentially go higher. I'm not going to say it's going higher, but potentially go higher. Uh, earnings are out of the way. Uh, next earnings are in July. So anything that looks interesting to you, add to your watch list. Now let's look. Uh, Let's get look at six flags here. I'm not crazy about that one. Here's Madison Square Garden and an expensive stock. This is the cause it's been building. By cause, I mean it's been consolidating in this area. If it breaks past here on good volume, there's a good chance it's going to go quite a bit higher. Uh, the earnings are out of the way. Now, another nice thing that uh, Matt and George put in this time is if you want news on a stock, all you have to do is hit your alternate N key. And let me bring this over into the window. I currently have mine uh, attached to bar chart. Uh, that's one of the data providers. If you want the news, you just come down to the company and it tells, uh, tells you what uh, the latest news in is in descending order. I'll show you that on another stock here. Uh, let's go to a different group. Uh, commercial vehicles up 2.98%. Uh, let's just take a look at Meritor. I have no idea what these stocks look like. Boy, this group has been beaten down. Here is stopping volume, a long wick down, a pivot point. Uh, that means that buyers, strong buyers, uh, came in. Uh, they did not want this stock to go down anymore. Do you think they had a, a premonition that this group may go up? I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's still in a strong downtrend uh, according uh, to uh, the, the moving averages. But this is extremely strong buying right here. Once again, the volume point of control uh, turned green. So, you know, that can go into a watch list. Let's just uh, hit my alternate N key for news. And unfortunately, it keeps coming up in the other window, but that's all right. And it takes you here. You can see that the bar chart technical opinion is a strong sell. Well, it certainly looks like a strong sell. But what are we seeing as VPA traders? We're seeing potential interest in the stock. They always have a recommendation over here. Just out of curiosity, this is our first hint that there is some interest in the stock. Let's uh, uh, let's take a look at one more here. But you can see these have all been beaten down. Let's look at a longer term view of it. I mean these have really uh, uh, been hammered but we're starting to see uh, some interest and how how do we see that interest? By doing what I'm doing. We're going from the top down in HGSI. I don't believe that you can do this anywhere else. And with these quick pick, uh, top down views, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. Now this is stocks down in groups intraday. And you can just look here and see uh, the weakness. I should have done this before, but uh, uh, this is a quick read on, on the groups. Uh, that are down and groups and stocks that are down. You just bring up the spectrum analyzer. Up here we're going to get a ton of them, but we can see what the dominant groups are. Banks and REITs were the dominant groups. There's, of course there's a, a lot of stocks in those two groups. You would expect them to be dominant, but you can get a, a read here and figure out. Now let's say I want to go to the banks. So if I click on banks here, the first bank or a bank will come to the top. I click on that and I chart it. But what I really wanted to, to do is go to the banks down here. See, it takes me directly 
to the banks. I don't have to scroll up and down for the banks. If I want to isolate the banks, I just change to the industry group. And these are the banks according to the, uh, well, this is industry price change uh, on this view. So, um, you know, I would have to go, well, here, I can just go to scorecard intraday. And that will uh, put me into the strong momentum intraday uh, combo. I know I move around quickly on this, uh, but I'm just showing you, you don't have to spend a bunch of time doing this if you don't want to. Let's see, industry. Oh, I didn't want industry groups. I Let me go back to this stocks. In groups intraday up and down and scorecard. I already showed you the uh, uh, intraday ETFs uh, when I opened uh, the presentation. And uh, that's uh, uh, what I look at often during the day on a second computer just to get a feel for the market. And you can see it change throughout the day. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, on this process here, it's uh, this is the top down. Now, if you want to just do some top, uh, stock prospecting, which I'm going to do now, I'm in all securities. I'm going to move down here. Uh, here's scorecard intraday, which uh, gives you the whole universe and 3,357 stocks that are in groups. If you want to limit your stocks to those trading for $15 and above, you click on this one. And... Uh, a semiconductor came to the top of the list. And once again, if you want to isolate, if you see a semiconductor at the top, you want to see what other ones are moving, you go top down, you change to the industry group, and it's going to show you the strength in the semiconductors. And then you can quickly flip through the charts. Now, here's another one I like to look at during the day, and I think you should too. Leaders up intraday on volume. We had 91 of them today. Now, for a stock to be a leader, it has to have an active fan in place. In other words, the 18 has to be above the 50, which has to be above the 100 and then above the 200. So these are the stocks which meet those qualifications. Now, Apple did not appear in this list today because until today, it wasn't a leader. Now it, uh, I believe, uh, well, we'll bring Apple up and take a look at it. But let me just bring the top stock up. And you can see that the fan, while well, it's hard to see on this one, let me go to a different one. The fan is in place. Here's the 18, here's the 50, here's the 100, here's the 200. The group is moving up. Look at all these great VPA flags. And it... Um, had a really nice day today. The volume point of control is green. And uh, uh, the VPOC or volume point of control 10 day is a good early warning signal. It doesn't mean it's going to follow through and it doesn't mean it's going to not fail like it does here. But it worked for a little while here, didn't it? It moved up and then it came down, but it caught it on the downside too. And when you get a signal like this, and I'll, I'll show you here how to find uh, these VPOC signals. Uh, you, you can do a filter, but you don't have to. You can just pick it up off of the warehouse view. So let's just look at this, uh, this one right here. Let me see if I have it in, in this view. I hope I do. If I don't, I'm going to put it in. Oh, it's, it's here. So you can see that the VPOC, or volume point of control on this, if you hold your mouse over this, it shows you what the complete title of, of the column is. It, it crossed over five days ago. Zero is always the crossover day. So if you're looking for crossovers, you look for uh, stocks that had a zero yesterday. I'll get this out of the way. And here's one that did a specialty pharma stock. Let me bring it up, and you can see that yesterday, let's see, earnings earnings were reported a couple of days ago, it looks like. And uh, here, here's your huge shakeout. And then yesterday, on this bar right here, that is where the volume point of control turned positive. 
Until then, it was negative. Uh, it's, it didn't catch this day here, but it caught this day. And this would have been a signal for a potential trade. I use this thing all the time. Over here, signal for potential trade. Had a nice move up, and then it started failing. You have to protect yourself when the, the stocks start to fail. But this is the column. Uh, always look for this. It's a percent close to the uh, percent close front slash to the VPOC 1010. And I'm not going to get into what the VPOC 1010 is today. It's uh, uh, all, all, there's videos up there, but I'll do that, that some other time. It's just a short term uh, potential buy and sell trade or signal. Okay, here's another one. Let's take a look. Oh, that's the one I just looked at. Here's another one, uh, Great Plains Energy. Okay. Right here, it was one day ago after this three-day sell-off, it turned green here again and moved up nicely. Now back here, you can see that the zero day was right here. Nice move up. This was not enough to turn it negative, and that was a great trade. So as we go forward uh, uh, with this VPA, uh, prospecting go forward from this point uh, not today but in the future uh, I want you to start uh, looking for these VPA flags now in, in my whole list entire list there are scans in there that looks just for VPA I would rather uh, approach it uh, from the top down like I showed you and then look for the signals because uh, that way you can uh, uh, maybe find groups that are turning and also find uh, uh, volume point of control signals that are only one or two days old or, or they're turning that day. Let's just take let's take a look at uh, uh, here's a long term uh, 21 days, 22 days ago. Look at this. Uh, I put my crosshair back on alternate C. Perfect timing on this. This was not enough to make it go negative. Doesn't work all the time, but it works a lot of the time. The symbol next to the name, well, uh, you mean like this, Watson? Well, that's where it, that's the way it is. I think that it's that way on all of them. I've tried to do that, but anyway, if it isn't, you know, I'll fix it. That that's the beauty of updating uh, the way I update now, uh, because whenever I make changes, uh, uh, fixing things, uh, making them more functional, I put those up on the server and uh, uh, as Insider Club. Uh, members, you, you every time you update, you you get the latest. Because you're you're getting what I'm getting, or what I currently have, I should say. Uh, okay, where was I here? I'm running out of time as usual, and we haven't even really talked about the market that much. Here's that trending stocks again. I really think you should spend some time on this on the end of day, rather than intraday range. Just use the percentage range. These are VPA bullish effort to rise stocks. They had effort to rise uh, flags yesterday. See the days since the last VPA signal. And this tells me if these are following through. If they're green, they're following through. Look at the, here's the effort to rise yesterday. And here's the follow through day today. Get a little longer look at this. Let's look at an, another one. Effort to rise, followed through. Effort to rise, followed through. Effort to rise, followed through, and so on down the list. Now, a lot of people like to do the test for supply. What the test for supply is, it's looking for a low volume test compared to the prior day. So here is KLA 10 core. Here's a test for supply. Here's another one right here. You can see that this group, the semiconductors, starting to turn up here. 
and there are multiple VPA flags here. This is the beauty of the top-down approach because we can start seeing these groups as they're starting to turn based upon advancers versus decliners. Now here's your test, low volume test. Let me point this out. This volume's lower than this volume. It came down, tested, and closed at its high. That's what generates it. Same thing here. This volume lower than the prior days. So a lot of people, myself included, I like to look for tests and then the next day you can see if they follow through. Very powerful. You can't, you can't get this stuff anywhere else. And here are the bullish candles and stocks and groups uh, moving up smart group. I've been through this. I started with this. Uh, notice it's sorted on the group and smart groups 1 to 15. I want you to concentrate on these. For the end of day, I have top-down views for the uh, major markets plus. I'll run through this very quickly. We'll just take a look at uh, some of these stocks. And then on the stock prospecting, I only have uh, uh, two, well, these two and then two more in here. Stocks end of day, which is essentially the scorecard and trending stocks. It's already set up, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, here. Right mouse click. I can do it on here. Uh, let me bring up a chart. Wow, look at this one. Why didn't we all buy Kirkland Lake Gold? Or maybe some of you did. Uh, quick add to group. I'm sorry. More info from the web. I just selected bar chart. You can select any of these. I know a lot of, a lot of people uh, uh, like to go to uh, uh, Finviz, but, you know, I, I'm trying bar chart. You want to look at, you, yeah, sure. Let's, let's look at Apple. And then I want to look at uh, uh, the markets here. So here's Apple. Uh, it had some great VPA flags. Uh yeah, yeah, I should not read any news whatsoever. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, 100 years ago, Wyckoff said, don't listen to any news, don't read any newspapers, pa just uh, do what the stock is telling you. And uh, he said, you'll be a lot further ahead because there is so much uh, misinformation out there. Like I said, all these analysts during this time period say Apple's not going to make earnings. Uh, they're those phones aren't selling. Little did they, they didn't know. What was this telling us? It was telling us it was finding support here and there were multiple VPA flags. Look at the volume coming in here. This is effort. Here's your result. And then you get the big uh, result today. Surprisingly, today's volume was less than the other day. Isn't that interesting? So it got out to a new high, and the volume was less than the other day. The smart money's buying down here. They're not buying here. Okay, I'm not going to look at a bunch of stocks, uh, but uh, Pete says uh, CECO and ALGN, possible candidates on the weekly. Uh, I want to go through a, a couple more of these things on the market, but... Uh, um, Boy, I don't know where an hour goes. It seems like a long time when I'm thinking about it, and it's it's no time at all. Um, it, let me just run through these very quickly. This is end of day. Top-down analysis, major markets plus. What I do is I go back into those market analysis groups, and I just go to this folder right here. Click through to it. And this is yesterday's... Or, data so it's not going to do us any good. This is something you do at the end of the day. You may want to take a snapshot of this with Snagit if you have it and uh, compare it to what it looks like after you do uh, your uh, update. Now I do want to show you that uh, here, here's the NASDAQ composite. This does update during the day as far as price goes. These update during the day but you're, you're not going to get the volume the uh, volume until the end of the day. That's why I look at the ETFs because you get a much better feel. 
for the volume. But you can see here's the NASDAQ. How do I know it's today? 5 4, 4 1 p.m. So, what do we have here on the NASDAQ? We have a, uh, an index that is in a trading range. That's all there is to it. Let me go to a chart that I usually use uh, for the NASDAQ. It's under Quick Start uh, NASDAQ Internals. And uh, this is yesterday's data. Notice that the uh, decliners led the advancers, and so did the advancing volume lead the declining volume. If you want this information, Hit your alternate I key, bring up the um, this window. Or you can also click right up here and it tells you. Once you're on a bar, it's not going to give me information today because I need, the, I need to wait for the download. But yesterday, it tells me the number of advancing stocks versus declining stocks, the unchanged stocks, volume, new highs versus new lows, and the arms index. Uh, so this is a... A chart I look at uh, uh, every day for the NASDAQ, but getting back to the NASDAQ, and let's just go, uh, well, here's the ENS multiple indicator chart. I put that in because I know some of you, a lot of you like to use it, but I'm just going to go to a plain old daily volume point analysis chart. This is in your, this is in your, uh, uh, quick charts also. I don't have many charts in here. There's no need to have all these charts. But what do we have here? We have a range-bound market that reacts to news. Now this, let's see, that's yesterday's volume. Like I said, we don't get this information until the, the download. Nice reversal yesterday on heavy volume. That showed that there were buyers coming in. Uh, Sinbaldo, yeah, yeah, or you can all do that as I, uh, as I, did I pronounce your name correctly? If not, I'm sorry. I'll do it again, or uh, you can go to that part of the movie, but I'll, I'll try to remember before I sign off here. Uh, anyway, these are updated uh, during the day, and uh, uh, what I want to show you is you can use the annotation tools. This was the low. I have it on Fibonacci. Just going to drag that up here. You can see that it's currently trading around the 38.2 retracement. The worst that it got was well down to 80% retracement, which is a lot. But it's coming back up. What do we see now? What do you, what do you see when you look at these last several days from this reversal point? We see a higher low here, don't we? And then... Uh, a higher low here if it breaks if it can break past this area uh, we're probably on our way up to test the the high but uh, every the more this nasdaq can hang around in here without coming down here and breaking this line if it breaks that line uh, we're in big trouble those solicitors keep calling me Okay, I'm going to clear this. I want to delete all the annotations to get it out of there. But uh, there are trend lines and things you can draw in here. I usually just look at the horizontal lines and look for support. Uh, and the lowest support was here. This is uh, the uh, next support. And uh, just get a visual on this. And I like to use the VPA flags. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, well, these are things that uh, you're you're familiar with. One thing, uh, let me show you this. I'm going to go back to all securities. Alternate space bar. And I'm going to click on earnings due dates. I use this every day to keep stay on top of the earnings. Sort on raw combo. And it's going to tell you in descending order the stocks. Uh, that are going to report today and the next day and so on. And then I put these in the uh, group for you. I've been uploading them every morning. Uh, so you have the uh, latest updates. Okay. I think I've covered most of it. I had to cover a lot of material in a short period of time. But uh, 
Uh, I'll send you the recording in the morning, Steve, uh, when I send out the notice. I'm not going to get it done tonight. Uh, anyway, let me go back to the designer. And here's where, it, where you find those smart groups. You go under the File menu, Manage Group Subscriptions, and go to the smart groups. I selected these. The top 50, this selects the top 50 stocks that appear most often in these smart groups. And this selects stocks that are trading options. Uh, or they're trading, they're actively trading options, I should say. I select Starters, Volume Price Analysis, Steckler, Gallardi, Ian Woodward, who was my partner, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, Jeffrey Scott, Don't Use Connors, uh, Morales and Casher, and uh, Morpheus. Uh, Morpheus is, uh, I, I like to have it in there. It's not part of the top 50, but I look at the stocks occasionally. Okay. And that's all you have to do. And then it'll go ahead and build those for you. And then they'll be in there every day. And where do you find them? You find them here in the designer. These will not appear in here until you select them. Uh, any, any questions? Uh, I don't want this video to get uh, too long. I hate uh, extremely long videos. But uh, any question about uh, uh, what I'm doing, what you're going to have, you're going to have these two in addition to the basic intraday and the end of this is the full library of scans you know we'll get into those there's are specialized scans but to really uh, select a lot of stocks good quality stocks you don't need to do a, a whole bunch of views you really don't and uh, i'll emphasize that uh, more and more as i go along all right anybody else any questions I've got the chat window open. I'll answer them uh, uh, before I go. Pete, are you still on? What were those stocks? Let me take a quick look. Oh, CECO. I got it. Oh, boy, that's an ugly chart. But you want to look at the weekly. I'll look at the weekly. Yeah, it looks much better on a weekly. Okay, and uh, ALGN. Now, this is the weekly. It's building a cause to go higher, it looks like. But, you know, beautiful here. Now it's it's becoming the chop. Let me look at the daily. Ah, boy. If I had any hair left, that would make me want to pull it out. But... Uh, Uh, anyway, it's it's building a cause to go one way or the other. We don't know. You run a VPA GIR every night. Good, good. Uh, I'll get more into that. And, you know, when I'm around on Friday, I'm going to do these uh, if people uh, will continue to attend because uh, uh, I uh, I think it's worthwhile. Okay, I'm going to shut it down. It's getting kind of long, uh, 70 minutes. So uh, anyway, I will uh, see you online next week. Have a good weekend. Yeah, uh, no, you're right about Shaq. Let me take a quick look at Shaq. Yeah, I saw that. Did you buy it? This was a flag. This was a flag that was forming. Effort to rise, effort to rise. Four days of a flag closing near the top part of the daily range. And then, uh, was this earnings day? Uh, no. But uh, you can see that uh, a lot of people are selling it. A lot of traders are taking profits on this too. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye now. You're welcome.